All right, welcome back. You are watching What Are You Saying? Hashtag Waze. Now, with special mm. needs comes stigma from the society and shame for the parent. Mm. How does a parent handle this? Remember, you can join the conversation by tweeting to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Waze or send an SMS to the number on your screen right now. Okay, and also you can watch our repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays and Sundays at 3 p.m course so now moving on to um uh you see you had a question before okay break? before we went on break i said that um how important is it for um the concept of um, additional needs to be taught in teacher education well the thing about it is that globally as international policy every teacher is trained on special education as in the first part of their teacher training program has the full component of additional needs. Mm -hmm. So they have like six weeks on the theory part and then six weeks in the practicum where they go actually into schools, special needs schools, and actually work with the child. You know, the problem that I, we face here is that we tend to base our education on beyond, beyond school, mm -hmm. as in, oh, he's in the nursery school, preschool, is that's mm. for tatas. Mm -hmm. He's just going to sleep there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they start focusing on primary. But the truth is that by primary, it's a disorder. So it's, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. There's nothing you can do. So if your child is struggling in primary school, it mm. started from preschool. Yeah. Oh. So is it very important for teachers to, to have IEP for every, so show, every child, child in, in Early years. Early years. Yes. Right. So once right, the teachers okay. are trained, then they're able to identify those children that would need an IEP mm -hmm. and start working on that. An IEP is an individual educational Champagne. plan or an individual progressive plan, depending on what country you're working in. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we have a message. What about what about causes of kids that did very poorly in their educational days? Uh, sorry, what? I think this question is what causes, Children. what about kids that did ver very poorly in their educational days and suddenly rose up in high school? Good. Or kids that were so bright but mm. eventually got dropped out of the university okay. due to poor results? Okay, it's basically, for the first answer, what about children who were very poor and mm -hmm. actually did well? Yeah. They must have had a teacher that was capable to walk around the disorder and then they excelled. Right. Most children or most um, students that get to university and drop out, I can, I'm almost 70% sure they had attention deficit disorder from when they were in play group from school. Attention deficit disorder allows you to go, but yeah. when you get to a particular stage, it, it's, a it just get comes stuck. up, yeah, you get stuck. Right, so let's talk about um, um, stigma. Mm -hmm. But sorry, before I get to stigma, Children with um, the special needs who somehow, for some reason, it was skipped, maybe by secondary school, you obviously can't work on it anymore. Is it possible that, would it be right to say that we should have like special provision for them, like so they don't compete alongside other well-developed kids in school? The thing about it is that every child has the opportunity and you must give that opportunity. Because mm -hmm. a child has been identified with special educational need does not mean that the child is not gonna do better than a child that is actually a type developing right what most times happens is that when you put in provisions especially children with specific learning disabilities their mm -hmm. IQ is very high so right. when you put in provisions to help them in the areas they're struggling with they do better than other children mm. so I've always said that you don't look at the disorder or the disability you look at how to build on the strengths of the child. Okay, so for right. instance now, if a child has dyslexia, he's not doing very well in academics. Mm -hmm. He does well in sports. Mm -hmm. He can get a sports scholarship sure. and become as, I mean, some footballers, trust me, right. they look like they have disorders. <laughs> you know? But they are making money today and they're doing fine. Right. And that is because you always have to look at the strengths. Children with specific learning disability, they have other strengths that you must capitalize on mm -hmm. while you are trying to get them to the educational level. No. Right. Okay, okay no, so let's right. talk about stigma. Let's move okay. on to That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, um, dealing uh, with stigma. Yes, in, in, the, in terms of interacting with um, 
children that have um, some sort of um, learning disorder or they have some sort of disorder. We uh, individuals that get to know these, 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 these children and in the process of us interacting with these children, we see that, oh, oh this child is not normal. So immediately you find us actually backing off and looking at the child in a particular way. So how do we interact with children that are autistic, um, have Asperger's, or they have some sort of disorder? How do we, as individuals who are not specialists, how do we interact with them? Well, the thing about it, the first thing that you have to notice is that they're all God's creatures. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that nobody plans to have a child with a disability. True. Yeah. And the third one is that because you don't have a child with disability doesn't mean that you're more highly favored than the ones that do. Mm -hmm. I think it's an inward, inward um, 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 ability that you have to discern for yourself. I don't have a child with a disability, but I have over 100 children that I'm working with who have disabilities, but that doesn't make me better than the, than the person who doesn't work with disability. Exactly. That's my calling, that's my passion. But you see, what we do need to teach is that if you have a child that has a disability and he's in a classroom, mm -hmm. all the other children will never know. It is the parent that will bring it to the attention of the child. Oh. Oh, right. Children don't know. Yes. When I was growing up, I went to a school with Down syndrome children. Mm. I thought they were all twins. You know, they all looked alike. Look alike. I thought they were twins. I reacted, I did, you know, played with them, went out for the, mm -hmm. nobody told me. It was only when I grew up and became an adult that I was like, oh, Wait those minute. children had Down syndrome. Yeah. Um. It never occurred to me. What happens is that parents are the ones that would take, you know that boy that you see that's jumping up and down? I don't want to don't see go him near then. him. Oh. Sure. You see that girl? Mm. Mm. They are the ones that start making other children notice that mm. there's something different. Oh. And if your child comes and says, Mommy, there was one boy that was jumping up and down, you say, He, please, he's your friend. Yeah. Play with him. And so it's all about empathy. It's all about empathy. empathy. Being in the shoes. Of this. I mean, I was very upset when one of my workers who left, she described the child she was working with as, you turned me into a nanny and I was cleaning the child's poo. And I'm thinking, this is the job you subscribed for. Mm -hmm. You need you know, to have empathy. You knew. But you only decided to do this job because you thought it was a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And when you realized it wasn't a means to an end, everything became disgusting Difficult. to you. Exactly. So you're saying that you have to be passionate about yeah. working with children with special needs. The to issue to work is that them. you have to go through the proper training, the proper certification. If you don't pass the training, you pass, don't pass the certification, you have no business in that job. Right, okay, so we have two questions. The first one is, um, it's funny, but I'll ask anyway, does flogging help to correct mental laziness? Wow. Unfortunately, it does not. It wow. doesn't. No. Okay. So, um, what is quickly like, in like text, ten seconds? What 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 should they do when your child is mentally lazy? How did you tell me the child is mentally lazy? Oh, that's Leading a not, that's a different discussion. Good. <laughs> All right. So, moving on. Why do parents feel uncomfortable opening up about their children with special needs? It's a society everywhere in the world parents are uncomfortable. But the thing about it is that we educators, we service providers, we have to continue being the advocates for the children. Right. You know, abroad, America, US, mm -hmm. people are in denial as much as they are in Nigeria. Sure. But the mm -hmm. unfortunate thing is that they're compelled to get their children assessed. You can't right. afford to miss any meeting. Social workers will come running and come knocking at your door. Mm -hmm. Here, we don't have that system. We have. We have tons of social workers who have been trained as social workers, but social workers don't know their job. They don't know what to do. Mm. My daughter has gone to America for six months to work as a social worker so she can understand what her responsibilities are. Mm. We keep on complaining, there are no jobs, there are no jobs. But mm. if we sit down and look at the jobs that can be created, even in this area of special education, mm -hmm. everybody will have something to do. Right. Now there is also something that we do. We say, okay, children are not so, children with um, special needs or um, additional needs that they're not supposed to eat some a particular type of food. They're not supposed to oh, drink. Dietary. It's a myth <laughs> that these are myths. So what do you? What's your take on this? Okay. There are also other myths, uh, especially people with Down syndrome 
that mm -hmm. you are either an Obanji. Remember the story about the German lady that rescued the guy who was thrown mm -hmm. out, the little boy who was thrown out because I think he had um, one of these mental and he um, threw disorder. A tantrum. Yeah, so she took him up and raised him, and now he's mm -hmm. he's okay. okay. He's a doctor or something. Yeah, and mm -hmm. some of them they would call them Obanji as well. Mm -hmm. and just so many different myths surrounding these people. The thing mm -hmm. about it is that do you answer your first question? If you are able to give your child Akara mm -hmm. and it helped, it doesn't mean that Akara will help the next child. Right. Okay. The problem is that people use their own experience to, um, to um, kind of fortify a cure for somebody else. It doesn't work that way. If you want to start selecting food and doing all those things, there are tests you can do. Okay before you can start doing those things. But on its own, restricting certain foods does not help the disorder. Mm. Mm. What so you, in fact, what tested. you're going to do is that you're going to give the child malnutrition and <laughs> compound the problem. <laughs> so you need to give children good food, whether they have a disorder or not. not. And then the issue of uh, banje and the rest, mm -hmm. it is still part of society thinking. You know, if the society continue, for instance, if schools practice school health. There will be no reason for that because the school health provider would have done workshops Screen for the parents yes. to explain to them right. this is the reason why this is happening and this is how you can get help. Mm. Mm. Right. Okay, so um, I think we're just about wrapping up. Um, generally, what is the future for giving our environment and how little education most teachers have? What is the future for these kids? Well, the thing about it is that where we are five years ago is not where we are today. And I can say categorically that as we continue creating awareness and pushing into the market, mm -hmm. it will get better for the children. The government has a very big part to play, but unfortunately, mm. I don't think the people in government Focus. tend to, they de don't tend to um, um, employ people who actually really understand the true complexities of education in totality. Okay. So you can have somebody who is a very good educationalist, who is probably very good in the um, setting up, mm -hmm. or the this or the that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it you know it, it, it it's so wide. But if you are going to work in that area of special education, mm -hmm. you really do need to get somebody who is properly well, trained in it to be able to give you the kind of advice that you need to work with the children and to work with the parents. Special education is one of the biggest um, and difficult areas of education everywhere in the world. It is demanding. Everywhere in the world. Very it's demanding. demanding. Mm. It's heartbreaking. It's no thank no it's a no thankful <laughs> job. But the truth of the matter is that every single day a child is born with a disability, whether we like it or not. And we have to be prepared right. for that child so that that child can reach its full potential. It's about quality of life mm -hmm. and not about stigma or stigmatization. Right. Okay. Um, we have um, quite, this is quite a sensitive topic. A lot of messages are popping in. I'll take this one. So this person says, good evening, ladies. I've got a few questions on the Down syndrome special needs kids. So I have a relation that has Down syndrome. She's about 11 years now, and it has affected her in many ways, such as her having a poor mental ability, mm -hmm. slow growth rate, overeating, and sometimes abnormal behaviors. She was put in a special school to help manage this, mm -hmm. and it's not even helpful as there has, no be there has not been any improvements. So my question is, are these behaviors going to fade off in the long run? And how can we control this disorder and, and channel it into productivity? Well, the truth of the matter is that it's never going to go away. The child is always going to have Down syndrome. But what we advocate is that the child had the Down syndrome from birth. Yeah. Yes. So immediately you notice the child had Down, 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 down syndrome, syndrome from birth. Then you put the child in a normal school. Normal school? Mainstream school, yes. Really? We Not special needs? No. We provide, we, that's what we do. So we integrate them so that they can learn appropriate sure. behaviors from their classroom mates. Mm -hmm. And they can learn how to behave better from their classroom mates. The worst thing that you can do is put a child with a disability 
in a special needs school before you have done everything you can in a mainstream school. Oh. Oh. Mainstream school with inclusive services is always the best solution. So for instance, most parents will say, oh, they don't want to take my child because he has Down syndrome. Okay, if your child is zero to three years old, please call Mrs. Oshikoya, I'll find a school. Mm. Do you understand? As yes. in, we have schools that work with us to provide that service for those children. Hmm. But if you bring a child 11 yeah, this to child me, is 15. 50, that, there's really she's already gone. No, she's actually 11. 11. And oh, there's another, another, yeah, another question. There's not much that I can do. Another question. This person says, please, I have a condition of a child who was born with autism okay. and would be 20 this year mm -hmm. and has been in and out of different care centers, but still has dysfunction, dysfunctional limbs and impaired speech. Please, is, is there any hope for this kid? Well, what I'll say is that there wouldn't be much hope in the sense that he has to manage their expectations for the child. He's 20, so what they should be doing is teaching him quality of life, adaptive skills, behavioral skills that will help him to function at his age of 20. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, autism all over the world, not much could be done. But as time has passed, you have things like Applied Behavior Analysis, ABA, which can be used. But at 20, in all fairness, mm -hmm. what they need to do is start teaching him adaptive skills. So he can go to somewhere like Patrick's Learning, um, Patrick's um, Speech and Language Center that focuses on teaching um, life skills. Then you have CDC, Child Developmental Center, in mm. Suleri, they teach baking, uh, cookery, and things skills. like that. Skills. So, he, he, you know, the parents should go to any of those places and try and enroll the child to be able to get better skills. Right. Mm. Fantastic. So, if they're not doing well academically, then they, they, yes, they, can, they scale. can take care they of are, themselves. They can, paint, they can, they can bake, yes. they can do all these things. Exactly. Life there's skills. A, yes. Mm. There is a um, vulcanizer next door to my, two blocks away from my house. Mm. He has um, Down syndrome. Syndrome. And he drives his car, he has his flat, you know, and, but he's a vulcanizer. Mm. He has a quality of life. Yes. He has a source of income. Right. He's living his life as best as, as he, he can. can. Mm -hmm. right. You know, one thing parents do is they prevent children from doing what they can because they feel they yeah. have a disability. The nanny will do this, you don't do that. Oh, this, this, that. They that cripple the child. cripple yeah. the child. At the end of the day, the child actually, actually, at the end of the day, the child actually feels um, crippled. crippled. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Oh dear. So you start learning early. Wow, there is so much I have learned. I just realized I know nothing. Yes. Like, we you know all nothing. Clueless. You know nothing, Jon yeah. Snow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, well, thank you so much, Helen Ashika. Yes, it's been I such a hope pleasure. to be back another time. Of course, yeah, this is such like we're still going to talk back, about man. dyslexia, yes. dyscalculia, and mm. all those. We can take it, them one by one. Yeah, because it's. On. I just Absolutely. realized as you were talking that each one, one is a broad specific. topic. Yeah. It's on broad. Its own. Yeah, and dyslexia broad. is so common in schools. Yes. Exactly. Dyscalculia is so common in schools. Exactly. And we haven't even we haven't even started work. We even we have not even scratched the surface. Mm. It's sad, but I'm glad we started this discussion which is absolutely what Waze is here for um, and thank you so much ladies and you it's been and an insightful conversation. I must comment that um, this is probably the first um, live TV that they actually ask questions. Oh. <laughs> well thank you we're trying thank to change. Most time I leave I'm like <laughs> so I'm very very happy you've got a good audience for them to I mean you got loads of questions yeah. and so you have I mean your audience base must be very wide thank so you I must congratulate you guys thank on you. thank you so thank much you so that much. is so thank sweet so alright like I said it's been such an insightful conversation please keep the conversation on our social media platforms as we continue to hear what are you saying Lagos Nigeria Africa global village in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Everyone is a genius, but if we judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing it is stupid. Do you agree? <laughs> yes, we do. Absolutely. Okay, right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Tomorrow is Monday. Have a fantastic week ahead. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.